Hey folks, welcome into NFL Daily, presented by Man Crates. I am Cam Rogers. That guy right there is Tom Dow. Just kidding, it's Harris Rubenstein that's along for the line. ride. Welcome, that, buddy. That's my line. I'm I supposed know. to do like what I do on the Cam show. And I you, stole you that just, from you. You totally stole. I'm broken on the inside. Lots to get through throughout the program, folks. NFL injury updates, rumors as well, and our five breakout teams for the 2018 season. That's, it's gonna get. It's getting a little hot in here. Yes. It's getting a little, little fiery up in here. It's gonna be good. Without any further ado, let's get to those NFL training camp injuries. We'll start things off with a tough one for the Washington Redskins. Harris, Darius Geis tore his ACL against the Patriots last Thursday. You saw it happen. It, it sucks. It, it sucks like Dalvin Cook getting injured last year sucks. I mean, Geis was going to be one of the better rookie running backs in the NFL. I, he was going to be my eventual pick for offensive rookie of the year. I just thought they were going to give him a ton of carries. And I thought his last year at LSU didn't really – it didn't really go into his kind of strengths of what he was going to be as an NFL running back. The dude can run people over. He's got great top end speed, you know, great stiff arm as well. We saw him break it out a couple times against my Patriots. But, you know, when he got injured, it didn't really look like anything crazy. And then all of a sudden, he was coming off the plane a little bit weird. And wham, they thought, you know, holy cow, MRI, torn ACL. They thought it was a sprained MCL. Then they thought it was a torn MCL, not a torn ACL. I mean, th this is... This is what is the most damaging thing for the NFL, losing great young players like this. It, it's really, it really sucks. Not the worst situation in the world for Washington. No. The silver lining is they have some depth. They have Rob Kelly, mm -hmm. Chris Thompson, Samaj P. Ryan, so they can get by. They don't need to rush to sign Jamal Charles. And throwback to last year when Chris Thompson, before he went down with an injury, he was incredible. He was amazing. He was one of the best running backs in the NFL for a considerable amount of the year last year. And then, obviously, he got injured, too. So maybe he can stay healthy for the whole year. You know how I feel about Samaj P. Ryan. He's not good. And he's, he's, he's slow and plodding. And he's like Ben Jarvis Greenell right, without the Patriots fine. offensive line. But so. he was solid for the Patriots, too. He but. was. There you go. Let's talk about Deion Kane because he is done for the year as well. Tore his ACL. Six-round selection out of Clemson for the Indianapolis Colts. Hauled in one catch for four yards before that injury went down, and he was creating a lot of buzz in training camp, Harris. You just, he can never quite get it, can he? I mean, it was just, you know, he just had a couple years at Clemson where, you know, he never really got going, and then he had the suspension, and then, you know, his last year at Clemson, he didn't blow up like we thought he was going to. Yep. And it just seems that, not that he can't get out of his own way, but the universe won't let him actually have a chance of being a pro NFL player. A torn ACL coming off the, the issues that he had at Clemson. And look, I understand that it was just training camp, but any time that you come into training camp and you're given a single digit number as a wide receiver, it's not a great sign for your overall chances to make the roster. But this will assure him that he stays on the team until next year. I think he's a good player. I still think he's a, a lot of potential, but... I mean, again, he just cannot seem to get it right. He just can't, no matter what he tries to do. Injury, suspension. Just, if it didn't work out for him at Clemson, I didn't think it was going to work out for him in the NFL. I think he but. would have had a ceiling of wide receiver number two on this team, too. Ryan Grant, Chester Rogers, these guys don't scare you. And, and as we will mention multiple times later in the show, Andrew Luck is back, which means that any wide receiver on this team could end up being yeah. you know, an actual star. Absolutely. So it is a shame that Deion Kane isn't going to be with us this year. Okay, Man Crate shows us this next injury update. Marcus Martin, guard for the Dallas Cowboys, Maybe will miss the, the season. Maybe for the better. Yeah. He's really bad. Well, we watched him against the 49ers, and he was giving up stuff left and right. Like, it's not pretty at all what Marcus Martin is bringing to the table. Okay, for so for the Dallas Cowboys, hoping for some depth on that front line there. Marcus Martin out. But uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys were active in signing a couple of, or looking into at least a couple of offensive linemen throughout the time here following that Martin injury there. We're talking about an offensive line, by the way, that is probably going to be the best in the NFL. Well, one of the best in the NFL for sure. It's it, it, especially top three, though. This does probably uh, stamp Chaz Green's chance of making the roster, though I know he plays yes. tackle, Martin plays guard and center, but just as much, as much offensive line depth as they can get, though, again, it might be for the best because Marcus Martin is not very good. All right, let's talk about Isaiah Crowell now. He suffered Whoa. a concussion mm -hmm. in that weekend preseason game against the Atlanta Falcons, Harris. Not good. Three injured running backs now for the Jets. Crowell like, is always hurt, it seems. Crowell is always hurt. Then McKenzie got hurt. Bilal Powell is going to actually you know, take over as the number one running back. He's going to blow up eventually. One of these years, Bilal Powell is going to take this to the next level. It's a shame. I thought Isaiah Crowell and the Jets was going to be a really good combo for them. I mean, look, 
you know, th their running game last year was just okay. Now they bring in a certifiable number one with a great change of pace back in Bilal Powell, and they could have actually had a legitimate running game behind Sam Darnold. Now they still could. It is only a concussion, but concussions plus running backs, especially between the tackle runners like Isaiah Crowell, it's, it's a little bit worrying for me. So, got to keep an eye out for these concussions. It's not something you want to mess with. Hey, Thomas Rawls is on the roster, so keep that in <laughs> mind. And he lives on the injury report. Thomas Rawls is just going to take one wrong step one day, and his feet are just going to vanish. Just probably and just burst into dust. All right, so tough news here for the San Francisco 49ers. It could have been worse, though. Mm -hmm. Jarek McKinnon... MRI revealed that he only suffered a strained calf muscle, but that didn't stop the 49ers from bringing in a free agent running back. We'll talk about him later. Yeah, and if you're the 49ers, you just gave Jarek McKinnon a ton of money. So if he's going down with any sort of injury, you are holding your breath and hoping and praying that it's just okay. But this is the worry that you're going to get with a guy like Jarek McKinnon. I understand that, you know, not all small running backs are the same. I understand that. He's but not built by any means. Exactly. There are dangers in making a running back of his size the number one guy. Just the amount of uh, you know, carries and the amount of stress that he's going to have to put on his body is going to be a lot more than he's used to. I mean, look at what the Patriots did with Deion Lewis. They still spelled him, even though he was clearly the best running back on the roster last year. There are a lot of small runners in the NFL who just can't have that kind of workload, and I'm worried that McKinnon might be that guy. It just, it, it's going to come down to, you know, are they going to use him primarily as a pass catcher? Or is he going to be a between the tackles runner? But, you know, that's what you're hoping the likes of Joe Williams and Matt Breed are going to be for. But for now, you, you got to be a little bit worried. And Just I would think that Kyle Shanahan is going to be very careful yes. with Jarek McKinnon going forward, especially considering the big fat contract they that he signed dumb. him to. Yeah. They gave him a lot of grief. So why rush things and have him play in meaningless games when he could get hurt more? Mm -hmm. So, by the way, Matt Breida should be good to go for week one of the regular season, but we likely won't see him during the preseason. He just got a nasty knee into his shoulder, and I, th I think there's just, he got like a, a shoulder contusion. He just has a huge bruise all yep. over his back, I'm sure. I've had an injury like that. Okay, let's talk about Rashawn Evans, expected to be the captain of that defense at some point in his career for Tennessee, dealing with an undisclosed injury, Harris. Interesting. It, it is interesting, and you know, he's been on the field doing upper body workouts, which tells me that it is obviously a leg issue. Cause, or it might also be a concussion issue. We're not really sure at all what the deal is with Rashad Evans right now. He hasn't practiced since the third day of camp. He's been on the side doing some workouts, but for the most part, very quiet offseason for a guy, like you said, who's supposed to be one of the most important pieces on this entire Titans defense. I mean, he's the centerpiece on this defense. And you know, I wonder if this is also a little bit for the better. I mean, he's coming in from an Alabama defense that obviously, you know, has its own level of complexity. Though I wonder if, you know, maybe this is for the better. This is going to certainly give him a lot more time to understand and learn the playbook. This is going to give Total him... Total spin oh, zone right oh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm helping the Tennessee Titans fans out here. But, you know, overall... If he's still working out, that means that he's not overly injured. But again, you know, with Mike Frable now as the head coach, new defensive system for him, he's going to be expected to help call plays this year. I just wonder if this also might be, you know, for the best. I am spin zoning this, but if he's doing injuries, I mean, he's doing like uh, battle ropes. That's what they say. It's not war rope, battle ropes. Yeah, uh, he's doing battle ropes. So if he's doing that, that's a very intensive workout for your body. So I don't think it's anything overly serious, but we'll see. Okay, Rashawn Evans supplanting Avery Williamson's role from last season for the Titans. All right, let's talk about Saquon Barkley. B -b -b Barkley. This lit up Twitter a little bit, Harris. Yeah. Spotted with a wrap on his leg Holy today. cow, everyone freaked out. But ironically, it came on a play where he made an unbelievable over-the-shoulder catch on a deep ball by Eli Manning. It was a great catch and a great run after, but he ended up kind of coming up a little gimpy. And with stuff like this, you take zero chances. If, if Saquon Barkley comes up even the slightest bit tight, you, you keep him out of practice for the you rest of the You quarantine him exactly. until the regular season. Put him in bubble wrap. Yeah. Don't even let this guy back on the football field. We already know what he can do. Just let him learn the offense and sit him on the side. I, I wouldn't even let him practice at this point. I, I'm such a worry wart with this stuff. A report no came out that it was a hamstring issue, Ooh, which no. is sometimes iffy. Ham, hamstring issues with running backs, they can just they, they will 
totally destabilize your entire career. So do not mess with hamstrings. Good move by the Giants just holding him out. I know that Saquon Barkley has literal tree trunks for legs, but they are still made out of muscle. And you have to be as close as you possibly can with messing up this stuff. I mean, with Darius Geis now out, I think Saquon Barkley is going to win Rookie of the Year. But you got to play it safe with a running back like him. I mean, he's going to get so many touches this year. They cannot afford to lose him. All right, will Saquon Barkley win Rookie of the Year? Let us know in comments. Type away. Type three for yes, four for no. You are of the camp, well, you were, that Darius Geis was going to win Rookie of the Year. Originally, I was just because I thought basic workload, but now I think Barkley will end up getting it. I mean, he's so explosive. He's so much fun to watch. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. I like this whole Giants team, in fact. You'll, you'll see them a little bit later. I, I like what they're doing on offense. I think the new system is going to work for them. All right, so that's the lowdown there with Saquon Barkley. And you guys are watching NFL Daily presented by Man Crates. Man Do you crates. know an awesome guy who needs a gift at Man Crates? Gifts are carefully curated like a museum, but actually exciting. We're talking about personalized barware, jerky rams, and project kits ready to delight any guy out there. The website, mancrates.com. Awesome gifts guys love. Let's continue along here, Harris. Talk about some more injury Let's updates. and. We'll talk about A.J. McCarron. So Bills offensive coordinator Brian Dable told reporters today that McCarron is fine, but he did have some sort of leg injury yesterday. And Peterman got hurt as well. A.J. McCarron is going to, we're going to, like, it's going to be 10 years, and we're going to look back and be like, do you remember A.J. McCarron? Just so many years, we're like, oh, he's finally going to get the chance to start. Oh, he's finally going to get the chance to start. A.J. McCarron, if he actually ends up starting an NFL game, I will be surprised. Just whether it's an injury or he's getting traded to the Browns or something wild happens in free agency, nothing right ever happens for A.J. McCarron except for, you know, being married and having children with Catherine Webb. That's really the only thing that's been going well for A.J. McCarron over the past five years. You don't think he's going to start for Buffalo? I don't know. Because just, A, I don't think he's healthy. B, it seems that, look, if there is even a remote possibility that A.J. McCarron is going to get beat out by Nathan Peterman for the first first team quarterback job that is all you need to know about AJ McCarron the fact that we're this far into camp and AJ McCarron hasn't already taken the quarterback job for himself unequivocally you're is shocked by that stunning okay. stunning me Josh Allen is bad and Nathan Peterman is almost as bad if not worse the fact that AJ McCarron isn't already the far and away clear-cut starter should tell you all you need to know about Nate about AJ McCarron and his future in the NFL no thank you all right, let's talk about a proven player in the NFL, Please. Mr. Eric Berry. But first, who should start at quarterback for the Bills? Let us know in comments. This Peterman, guy. Allen, AJ you. McCarron, me. You'll be just as effective. Just as many touchdowns and just as many interceptions. Look, the, the, <laughs> the, the Bills should just start Josh Allen and let it go. Like, just let the dude develop. Doesn't matter if he's ready. When, what is being ready as the Buffalo Bills quarterback? Just throw him out there. Okay, Eric Berry was not present for Chiefs practice today due to a heel injury. I oh wonder boy. if it's plantar fasciitis. I know all about that. <laughs> Has missed two consecutive practices now, and this ain't great news considering the Chiefs lost Daniel Sorensen recently to a tibial plateau fracture. Ouch. So... Injuries in that secondary. Yeah, and also, if you're the Chiefs and you heal, he, you hear, excuse me, English language, heal injury plus Eric Berry, you put Berry in bubble wrap because after that Achilles injury that took out an entire season for Berry, you do not mess with any heel injury. Now, I'm sure it's just something sore, or I'm sure that he, you know, he just felt a little bit, a little tweak, and they don't want to push him, but. Heel injuries after you've already blunted your Achilles with, you know, a surgically repaired one. Oh boy, uh, that's not a good sign. I understand it might just be something minor, but you never want to hear that a year after a knee surgery. I mean, we heard it all the time with a bunch of NFL players and a bunch of NBA players as well yep. with an Achilles injury. Once you start getting some pain down there, you got you to gotta come way back and start taking a load off. I want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Mizzen and Main for sporting us today. We're wearing these comfortable as F shirts. Check them out. Comfortable.af. Made right here in America. Sweat wicking technology. No ironing needed. Get it done today. We thank Miz and Maine for helping us out with some good swag. All right, let's talk about Terrell Pryor now. Seems to be a frequent man on the injury report. He revealed today he actually fractured his ankle in the spring. Ouch. So he's fine right now. Participated in team drills today. He won't be playing in the preseason game Thursday, but it's 
Worth bearing in mind here, Harris, that Pryor may not even make the 53-man roster for the Jets. Have you seen the Jets wide receiver depth chart? It's bad. It's really, really bad. Robbie Anderson, Jermaine Curse, Quincy Nunwa, Ardarius Stewart. And Terrell Pryor can't even be the wide receiver five on that team. There wide are like, some worries, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. If Terrell Pryor can't make the Jets 53-man roster, it, it might be over, people. It might be time to pull the cord on Terrell Pryor's or NFL career. Or play quarterback. Or, yes, bring, put Terrell Pryor back. <laughs> Just run a pure Wildcat offense Absolutely. with Terrell Pryor. Please, that'd be so much fun. You'd you, you destroy the NFL <laughs> for two weeks until everyone figured it out again, just like they did back in 2008. All right, latest NFL training camp injury reports right there.